number 17. Explain why a hydrogen bond between two water molecules is weaker than a hydrogen bond between uh, two hydrogen fluoride molecules. All right, so we have two compounds here. We're talking about water and we're talking about hydrogen fluoride. So water, we all know what water is, right? Water is H2O. Now the other compound, hydrogen fluoride, we can use our um, crisscross method to kind of get to the compound here, F -U -F -L -U -O -R -I -D -E. Now this molecule is between a hydrogen and a fluorine, right? So on the periodic table, hydrogen is a plus one charge and fluorine is a minus one charge. One to one, this means that hydrogen fluoride has to be HF. All right. So now they're saying that a hydrogen bond between two water molecules is weaker than a hydrogen bond between two uh, hydrogen fluoride molecules. So let's actually draw the hydrogen bond. Now remember, a hydrogen bond is not an actual distinct covalent bond. It is one of your intermolecular forces. I don't know why they call it a bond. It's not really a, an actual single, double, or triple bond. It's just an interaction. It's just an intermolecular force. And a hydrogen bond only exists when you have OH. So maybe I'll write this down. You have OH bonds or NH bonds or FH bonds. So when I'm dealing with water, if I just draw my Lewis structure, I have oxygen that is a single bond to both hydrogens and two lone pairs. Now, we see that we have a OH bond here, which means that this can form a hydrogen bond. And just know that opposite charges attract between the O and the H bond, which one of these is partial positive and which one of these is partial negative. Well, this has to do with the dipole the more electronegative element is always going to be the negative one, the partial negative. And since oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, oxygen is always going to be the partial positive, and partial with the dipole just means this little funky symbol here. And this one's not going to be the positive. This one's going to be the negative, and the hydrogens are going to be partial positive because they are less electronegative than the oxygen. So... If I want to hydrogen bond between two water molecules, positives hook up with negatives, opposites attract. So maybe this positive is going to have a hydrogen bond and we draw the hydrogen bond by a bracket, not a bracket, but a dashed line. Because if I draw a straight line, that means that it's an actual covalent bond. But a, a Josh, a Josh, <laughs> A dotted line represents that it's a force. And in this case, this is the hydrogen bond. So the positive has to hook up with the negative on the other hand, which is the oxygen. And then the cycle just keeps repeating. And then I have my two lone electrons. And specifically, it is the electrons of the oxygen that is... Uh, making that hydrogen bond between the hydrogen. The oxygen here is partial negative, partial positive, and the cycle keeps repeating if I have to uh, draw multiple water bonds or water hydrogen bonding. Now let's do the same for HF. Well, we have an H, single bound with an F, and fluorine will have the six dots around it. If I did the same thing in terms of HF, which one is the partial positive and which one is the partial negative? Well, fluorine is the most electronegative element on the periodic table, so fluorine has to be the negative and the hydrogen has to be the positive. So if I just draw two hydrogen fluoride molecules making a um, hydrogen bond, I'll take it from the negative and maybe I'll just say that this is going to form a dashed line between 
the other HF molecule. And since this is a negative, the partial positive has to be on the other side. And the partial positive is H, which then has the actual s single bond with the other HF. And there is your hydrogen bond. And maybe I'll just make it a different color. Let's just show you. So I have one HF. I have another HF. This fluorine is partial negative. And that's the difference between the two hydrogen bonding. But the question is, why is the water molecule hydrogen bonding weaker than the hydrogen bonding that's found between two HFs? Well, the only difference was the elements that was making the hydrogen bond, right? The hydrogen is the same for both, but the only difference is oxygen and a fluorine. And if we look on the periodic table, here's my lovely periodic table, and I'll call this, um, we'll say electronegativity. Electronegativity. Remember that as you go across a period, electronegativity will increase. And you have oxygen right next to fluorine. Fluorine is the most electronegative element, which means that this attraction between the other hydrogen is much greater than the hydrogen bond, the attraction between the oxygen and the hydrogen. So why would a hydrogen bond between two water molecules be weaker? It's because the fluorine is the greatest, the greatest electronegative element. And because of that, the more electronegative the element, the stronger the hydrogen bond. Since oxygen is the weaker electronegative, to, uh, weaker electronegative element of the two, it would have a weaker hydrogen bond. So maybe I'll just put that here. So the oxygen has the less we'll say less electronegative, less electronegative than fluorine. And because of that, it has a weaker hydrogen bond. And there you go. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's just box these off. So this is talking about it in terms of oxygen. And this is talking about it in terms of fluorine, but it's basically the same answer. Okay, what'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for viewing the video. And uh, if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. Just gets the word out there that this educational uh, YouTube channel exists. And thank you so much for that. Let's keep learning, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.